I'm Olivia Newton-John, and I'm a lucky woman. I'm a breast cancer survivor. And that's why this film hits home with me. For much of my adult life, I've been deeply concerned for our planet and all life on it. And it's scary to think that our very environment, or at least what we humans are doing to it, could be contributing to the growing rate of many diseases, including breast cancer. Think about this. One in eight women will get breast cancer in her lifetime. I was the one, even though I ate well, exercised, and didn't drink or smoke. So what caused it? Five years away from surgery and chemotherapy and breathing a little easier, I'm really examining what caused my cancer. Was it from the pesticides sprayed on the fruits and vegetables I ate? Was it in the polluted air that I breathed when I went running? Or was it in the water that I drank? This film pieces together some fascinating clues about how our environment affects the health of women as well as men and children. What causes breast cancer? In fact, one out of every 10 women who get the disease is born with some defect in her genes. That means that nine out of every 10 women who get breast cancer were born with healthy genes and something happened to them in the course of their lifetime to give them the disease. We think that some part of the breast cancer that's occurring today may be due to environmental factors. Why? Has it increased? I think that the toxicity, the pollutants, um, the chemicals generally in uh, use in society as a whole and in most places is the cause. There is no other explanation. I feel that it isn't so much that I inherited the gene that killed my mother, because it's a two step process that I inherited the same environment that she resided in. And I inherited the same foods and the same pollution living in New Jersey, and that I didn't protect myself from a carcinogenic environment. Well, basically, all cancer is genetic. It's all genes that are screwed up. Now, sometimes you inherit a screwed up gene from your mother or your father, and then you have hereditary breast cancer. More commonly, you inherit normal genes, and then something comes along in the environment and screws up the genes, a carcinogen. And so what we really are looking for is a combination of genes and environment. And probably most commonly, it's both together. You don't inherit a gene that's specific for breast cancer, but maybe you inherit a gene which makes you more susceptible to a carcinogen in the environment. It's just not in harmony with nature any longer. Big highways and railways cutting through our territories. It's all contrary to our, our beliefs. And I know people call it progress, but I don't know what the end result of this progress is supposed to be. It's still beyond us. What, what are we supposed to be progressing to? Most of the efforts to avoid cancer have uh, focused on the individual. So once you recognize a hazard, you can either try to get rid of the hazard or you can try to avoid the hazard. Uh, for example, tobacco uh, and smoking. Instead of going after the growers of the tobacco and the pollution in it, we tell people not to smoke. Or instead of going after supersonic planes or atmospheric nuclear testing, which damage the ozone layer, we uh, tell people uh, to stop using underarm deodorant or it's their refrigerators. We're going to look at two key environmental problems that have been linked to breast cancer. The first is radiation. Everything from nuclear testing to routine x-rays. The second is the huge family of toxic chemicals found in some pesticides, fuels, plastics, and even certain therapeutic drugs. While we spend billions of dollars on cancer research, and still there is no cure, research on the prevention of cancer has been largely ignored. There are some things we can do to reduce our chances of getting cancer, such as eating a healthy diet and not smoking, but there is no escape from toxins that are in the very air we breathe, the water we drink, and the food we eat. How did these toxins get there? How can we sort out conflicting opinions? Who is responsible? 
You know, more than a hundred years ago, there were scientists who warned that cigarette smoking was going to be bad for you. They were basically ignored. And it wasn't until more than 50 studies had accumulated in 20 different countries, all showing that cigarette smoking increased the risk of lung cancer and other diseases, that governments finally took action. In this situation with breast cancer in the environment, we have a similar problem in that now we have a number of studies in a number of different countries all suggesting that there is an increase in the risk of breast cancer with exposure to certain environmental contaminants. 